Hello and welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. I am Tina Salzer and in today's webinar we are going to talk, take a look at how we can engage and involve students with the use of Seesaw. So please feel free to access these slides um, using this bit.ly below. There is a lot of information that we're not going to go through that, and a lot of resources on the slides that you are welcome to use. And so again, please go ahead and feel free to access this bit.ly so that you can get all the resources in this slide. So, sorry about that. Um, Seesaw has so many different ways that students can get involved with the use of the tool. And I've seen it work with students where they are actually um, proud of their work and want to post their work on to Seesaw so they can share with their parents. Um, on this slide, you're going to see a, a picture, a snapshot of 100 ways students can use Seesaw. Seesaw in the classroom, and this was actually shared with me through the Seesaw Ambassador Program. And so I um, posted in this bit.ly right here, there are tons of, hundreds of ideas on there that you can um, use with your students in your classroom. So please feel free to access that. And I apologize, my slides are not working here. So some of you who have not even began with Seesaw yet or are just in the beginning stages of Seesaw, there's lots of great ways to get started um, that with Seesaw that can help you communicate just directly with parents. And so some of those ways are you can start, first of all, by introducing your parents to your Seesaw program and what it's supposed to be about for them. And so I recommend writing this note at the very top when you start engaging parents in the use of Seesaw and um, communicating with them that all comments are to be constructed because that the Seesaw program is actually meant to be um, something to encourage the students progress and to encourage have good conversations between parents, teachers, and students. Um, and make sure you're talking about how the comments should be specific and um, add to the conversation. Um, and please note to parents that when they do share a comment on there, uh, it is shared with everyone, students and parents. And so make sure that they're aware of that in that first post. Now, another way that you can get started with this is to, I, as a parent, love this part where you can communicate your objectives either for the week or for the day, however you choose to do it. Um, but what I like about this is you can write a note to parents with the objectives in it, but you could also record your voice reading the objectives to parents. And so you can, with your voice recording, you can pull out the most important details and to and help ensure that parents get those details pulled out of there. Now, another way um, that you can get started with this is to post your newsletters into Seesaw. So I actually created this newsletter in s'more.com and then I just posted it as a link. What I like about that is that the parents will start to recognize the structure of your newsletter and will know immediately um, that it is your newsletter that you posted. And, and once they click on it in Seesaw, it takes them out to the S'more newsletter page. So you can use other apps and upload this into Seesaw as well. So those are some ways that you can get started with Seesaw. Um, but let's talk more about how you can start engaging your students with the use of Seesaw and some ways that you can start bringing this uh, app into your curriculum for engagement. So the first thing to do is to make a plan with your students. Determine how you're going to set your class up, and that's going to be based upon what kind of devices you have to use. Do you have more than one device that the students can post on? Are you limited to one device in the classroom per student um, or, or just one device? And, and that will take some time to, to determine how you're going to use that. But then I would suggest going through the directions with students on how the app itself works. So you put up the presentation, you put up Seesaw on the board, and you show them how each tool works within Seesaw and all the features that are there um, within the app. Then I encourage you to create a printout either that you can hand out to each student or just to post in the area that you're going, they're going to be using Seesaw. And in this presentation, there is a link right here to a to one that another teacher shared through Seesaw Ambassadors with us. And so 
this is a great resource and you are welcome to um, make a copy of your own or print it out and edit it yourself for your classroom. But I highly encourage you to post this or at least give a printout for the students so that they know um, and are able to follow through with that, especially as they get started. Now, if you need to, you might want to set up a an area where students can upload their artifacts to Seesaw, especially if you're going to have them recording their voice a lot. Um, because especially if you have a busy classroom and lots of students, you're their voices are not going to be picked up the best. But I was given a suggestion of using a paper box and turning it on its side. If you put the iPad to the back of the paper box, the recording or the voice recording is much more powerful for the students um, as they record their Seesaw artifact. So let's jump right into some classroom examples. In these slides, I have lots of different examples for different grade uh, groups. We're not going to go through all of them, but please again feel free to access these slides and, and look at some of them on your own time. Um, there's examples that I used with my daughters, there's examples that other teachers have shared with me, and there's examples from the Seesaw Ambassador Program as well. So let's begin with some ideas to use with math. So first of all, this is a great example of um, how you students can explain their understanding or knowledge of a concept. Okay, so in this example, the student had actually um, used manipul manipulatives, taken a picture of it, uploaded it into Seesaw, and used the drawing tool to circle the groups, and then as well used the drawing tool to record the uh, addition problem. And then to explain, he recorded his voice over top of it. So he used a lot of different tools in this explanation of the math problem. And this one, he is explaining, excuse me, what he learned about or what he knows about parallel lines. So that is another example of how they use drawing and recording. And um, a great example, a lot of you, are, our students struggle with counting money, but this is a way that you could record them counting money and they could practice in that manner. Um, these are some fun ones. This one is the students went on and they were learning about the sphere. And so they found some spheres in their classroom and they used pic collage to um, load those different pictures. And then they put the picture of pic collage into Seesaw and recorded their voice. So they used another kind of app to upload it in there. Um, here's another example of explaining a polygon. So in this example, as you can see, the student is explaining how to find the area of that polygon and how he found it. So he used his voice to explain how he went through the process, which is a great assessment tool as well. So let's jump into some examples of some reading or language arts purposes here. So this one is, I like this one because it's an assessment check on the words that, or the sight words that the student is supposed to know. So as you can see in this one, the student took a picture of their sight words, read them out loud, and was able to use the drawing tool to find 
errors and then record their voice reading the words as they suck. So it was a good assessment for the teacher, but the student as well. This one is a high school example um, of, excuse me, how they used Padlet to create a wall and explain vocabulary words that they were learning and then post that into Seesaw for the teacher to see and assess. This example is a journal writing example with peer feedback. So when, if I pull it up here, the student um, wrote the journal and then within Seesaw allowed other classmates to comment on the feedback and give them feedback on their journal writing right in their writing themselves. And keep in mind, the parents see this as well. So this is a great way to, to bring that in. Here's an example of um, how you can use it to practice spelling words. And as you can see, the, you can, the student can use the note to type it in, and they could also use a drawing tool in there if they wanted to underline the word in the sentence, but then they can go back and read the sentence. Here's a, a very elementary example of how you could show the students practicing their letters and their letter sounds and their knowledge of letters. So in this picture, um, she had to identify that it was the letter Z. And she wrote the letter Z and she drew a picture of something that starts with the letter Z. There are some more really great examples on here on this um, presentation, so please feel free to look through some of these different ones. But these are some um, great ways to use Seesaw. So that, that's a retelling a story, um, reading summary example. So again, some great examples of the ways that you can use Seesaw. Now here's some 6 through 12 examples that I thought I would share because I thought they were pretty unique. Um, this first one is an emoji, using emojis to, sorry, I have them linked to the website, but they use emojis as an exit ticket. So on Seesaw, they post their emojis to tell how well they understood the lesson and how they felt about the subject. And so they're just using pictures to explain. And then the teacher on Seesaw could have more communication with that student if needed, especially if they see some confusion in there. Um, I also like this idea number four on the interview. And each of these slides are linked to some more great high school and middle school examples. Um, but in this one, the the students were actually asked to interview another student and um, come up with some examples from there, and so that's a great one. There, there's some app smash ideas down here as well for high school. Let's look at some science examples. So here's a very elementary science example. Um, my daughter was learning about animals. And so she was able to identify that picture as a horse. Um, I really like this one because this is talking about how students can use Seesaw to reflect on their science projects. So in this one, she took a picture and she was able to draw on top of that picture to help explain her ideas and thoughts behind that science project. I did want to show you this one too because I thought this one was rather unique. They're actually doing a predictive um, thing.
So again, in this one, they're working as a collaborative group to explain their predictions on what they think is going to happen in science. And so I think that's a great way to use uh, to use Seesaw because then they once they're done with the experiment, they can go back and explain possibly what happened using the vocabulary words that they learned. Um, here's another example of science. So now another example of what the student learned from their experiment. Here's a an upper third through fifth where they were talking about oops, excuse me, about weather predictions and groundhog predictions. So that's a great way to introduce them to predictions. In this example down here, this is um, a video, a YouTube video that was posted um, on how STEM teachers are using Seesaw in the classroom for 6th through 12th grade. Let's go into some social studies examples. I really like this one. Um, this is a historical characters project that was created first in Chatterpix and then uploaded to Seesaw. So basically the student learned, got some information about the president and put his information together and was able to record a video in Chatterpix to explain using the picture of Ronald Reagan himself and uploading it into Seesaw for assessment. Um, here are some other examples. I really like this example of the circuit, an explanation of how they used it. <laughs> so that was an example of explaining and explaining why their first didn't work. So that's a great way to assess as well. Um, this example, this was one my daughter did, but this is a great way to incorporate art into Seesaw because your students can create a picture and then explain how they designed and, and created that picture. This is a very elementary one, um, but it's a great way to incorporate art into Seesaw. And so that's just an example of, of what the art piece can look like. Um, there's lots of, there's a lot more examples in here. There's some student examples from middle school and from high school that you can visit to. Um, lots of resources on this site. So again, please feel free to access these slides and use them to however you want. And keep in mind, Seesaw is one of uh, is a very powerful tool, not only for communication with your parents, but I've seen it um, engage and involve students as well. Once they get to start posting to that audience outside of their school, they really um, have a lot of ownership for the artifacts that they post in Seesaw. If you'd like more information or more examples or more ideas, please feel free to contact me at any time. I am a Seesaw ambassador, so I get those, get all kinds of different ideas shared with me at all times. So thank you for listening.